you, you've been through some trials, you've been through some hard times. I mean, you've been through some tough times. But you know, those, those things have come and they have made you stronger. Amen. They made you have an ability to weather these storms. They've equipped you. Amen. They've equipped you. I mean, we've been through some tough times. But I'm here to tell you now that every time you've came through, every time you've came through, God has been there with you. He's always made a way where there seemeth to be no way. He's always given you an exit. He's always given you an open. The Lord told me that we need to become people of expectation. That we claim to be people of faith, but our faith is not based upon doctrinal, denominational, you know, uh, uh, just the, the logistics of things, but it's based upon the Spirit. Yes. Amen? Yes. Our faith must right. be based in the Spirit. Yes. We are spiritual beings having a natural experience, not natural beings having a spiritual experience. Yes. Yes. God wants to show Himself strong. Yes. The yes. thing about God is that God is God and He can... He can be God, and we can glory, glorify God. And within within the framework of the nature of God is the Almighty, the ability to, uh, I don't want to say, the ability to have the, the egoness of God, the ego of God, knowing that he's God. So this is why God takes pleasure in our worship pleasure in our praise. This is why God takes pleasure in our faith in him. Yes. Amen. Yes. So, you know, we're we're hum we're called to be humble people. Yes. At the same time we can boldly come before the throne. Yes. But nowhere in the Bible does it say that God is called to be a humble God. Right. Amen. No. So you can put expectations on God. Yes. He's God. Come on. Yes. There's only one. He's God. You can put expectations on God because he's God. All you have to do is muster up the faith to believe and trust yes, the Lord. Yes, That's the truth. Come on. Come on. Give the Lord praise to yeah. yeah. Hey, how, how are we looking, guys? Yeah. What do you think of these guys, man? Look at these guys. Huh? Huh? He told me not to say anything, but I'm saying something anyway. Uh, Logan had all of these custom made for us. Exchange, right? Medium of exchange. It's agreed. 
it, it's, it's an agreed upon item you can use to make a purchase, right? The thing about money is the value of it depends on where you're at, yeah. right? I mean, you know, other countries have their own currency, and it's not worth as much as it is here. It's sometimes, right? I don't know, maybe right now ours isn't worth much somewhere else, yeah. right? I know $100 in other states goes a lot further than $100 in California. Yeah. Try trying to read my notes. So the, this currency, the, the medium of exchange, we came up with, you know, in, in the Bible they talk about trading goats, lamb, sheep, right? That was their medium of exchange. They used animals. Sometimes some farmers still use animals, right? They still use beef farm to trade cattle for corn, right? Vice versa. Whatever you agree upon, that's what, right? Like I said, the value changes. So money, is money good? Is money evil? Money has no standards. It has no moral compass. It's just an inanimate object. What you do with money can make it evil. What you do with it can make it good, right? Well, how you value money, yeah. right, is what matters. How you value that money, that inanimate, that medium, that thing that means almost nothing, right? It's, it's how you value that, what you look at that, right? You know, money, if I take some money and sit it here, it can't do anything, right? We, I have to tell it to do something, right? Well, that's powerful. You have to tell it to do something. Right I have to tell it if I want it to do go buy me a vehicle. I have to tell it if I want it to buy me food, right? Mm -hmm. Some of us use it. Some not some of us, but some people in the room use it for other things I won't mention. Yeah. It cannot act on its own, right? It doesn't do good deeds. It doesn't commit crimes. It's just nothing, right? Yeah. It's what we put on it as value, yes. right? But yet, we value it so much that it controls our lives, right? Instead of us telling it what to do, it tells us what to do, right? Am I lying? Am I lying? People will do all kinds of things for money, right? But we hardly ever make money do things for us, right? Now, it, in the Bible, it doesn't say that money is evil. It says the, the, the love of money, right? The love of money. Money is good. Money can be good, right? If you're wealthy, bless the church. Bless people, right? Feed the homeless. Feed the hungry, right? Buy that mama diapers if she needs diapers and food for kids, right? If you're blessed, blessed. Be a blessing. Money, we worship. And I say we, I don't mean us. I mean the world, you know. As a general statement, we we worship money, right? We work for money. Money doesn't work for us. We put the value of above God on money, right? When you read scripture, you know the scripture, the 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 the, the Bible has over two thousand scriptures about money, tithe, offering, right? Sixteen of the thirty-eight parables that Jesus gave were about money. Anyone know that? So when you talk about money, people get funny it's because there's, the Bible talks about money. Right? Right. The church is supposed to talk about money because the Bible talks about money. Right. Right? Right. Right. But see, we put our value on this on this money over here, and then our God is right here, right? Wow. And we we work really hard for this one right here, right. right? We work really hard for this one, and, and it controls everything around our lives, right? When we're supposed to work really hard for this one, yes. it's supposed to control everything around our lives, right? But like, yeah, but you don't understand. I gotta work because I need this. I gotta work the overtime. I can't come, I can't come on Sundays because I gotta work the overtime because I gotta make the car payment that I just bought. Sorry, Mike. I'm not thinking. Since <laughs> 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 I came out, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna. No, right? We, I gotta work the overtime because I bought this house and the PG&E was a little bit higher this month because it was a hot month, so I gotta work the overtime. I can't come to church. 
In Psalms 34, it says the young lion lacks food and suffer hunger, but they who seek inquire and, and inquire of and require the Lord, yes. none of them shall lack any beneficial thing. Amen. Amen. Right? Philippians Amen. 4 says, and my God will liberally yes. supply, mm -hmm. fill to the full your every need according to his riches and glory. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Liberally fill. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. When you seek this, work for this, yeah. strive for God, yeah. you don't have to worry right. about right. striving for this. Amen. Right. Right. Working right. for that. Right. Working for that. Right? Right. 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 So money is just a medium of exchange. It's nothing. It has no value. So why do we worship it so much if it has no value? When this God over here has all the value in the world. Right? And not only does he have all the value in the world, but he values you. Yes. Money doesn't value you. Right? When money doesn't value you. Money can't do nothing for you. You have to just, you know, you have to make money do something. Right? And where does it all lead to? Your heart. Yeah. The condition of your heart. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you love God, you don't worry about the value of money. You don't worry about how you're going to do this, how you're going to do that. God has already said, worship me, seek me, and I got you. Yes. Yes. Right? Right? Amen. Worship me, seek me, and I got you. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's a hard, hard concept to grasp. It really is. Not really. <laughs> but it is for a new Christian coming in, right? You're like, man, how can I trust this God with my money that I work for? Well, God, you gotta have faith. You gotta be, you believe in Him, right? Well, what, then believe in His Word. Amen. Amen. So don't get funny when it comes to money. Amen. <laughs> Everybody lift your time and offering up. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Pastor Mike to pray. Oh, God, we thank you for the chance to be here today. God, we're so grateful, Father God, that we can come into your house on this, this Sunday morning, God, to lift up our praise to you, God, to worship your holy name, yes. Father God, to have a place we can come, God, where safety is, my Father God, where we're coming, God, expecting God, miracles, God, to take place, God, in all of our lives, my God. We lift up our time to you, God, our offering.
I ain't saying it won't. I ain't saying anything that if you're not faithful in your tithe and offering that keeps you out of heaven. That ain't between me. That's between you and God. Yeah. I'm just telling you that when in my life I've watched the blessings of the Lord unfold yeah. so much yeah. because I was willing to make those yes. investments yes. into His kingdom. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Well, that's our first fruits right there, showing that love. Hey, turn your Bibles with me to the book of, check, of Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. I hope you came here today uh, expecting yes, God to do something. Yes, amen. You don't have some expectation. I heard Pastor Mike praying this morning. He says, God, I expect you to move. I expect you to bless people. I expect you to heal. I expect it. Amen. How many of you came with expectation? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Luke chapter 3, verse 15. I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna read uh, part A of that verse because it's two different messages there. But, <clears throat> and it says, and as the people were in expectation, and all of the men mused in their hearts of John, whether he was the Christ or not, amen? Yes. You may be seated. That's all I'm gonna read. <laughs> I want to plant a revelation down in your heart. I want to plant something in you today, but before I do, I want, I want Jacob to stand and pray for us right now. Amen. Everybody receive. Amen. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we get to come together in your house today, Lord Father God. Lord Father God, right now we lift up Pastor as he brings this message, Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will work in him through a way that his words are not like gravel that falls to the ground, but they will penetrate men's and women's hearts today, Lord Father God. And for our congregation, Lord God, I pray that we will have ears to hear, Lord. Ears to hear and understand and eyes to see what is the oracles of you, God, what is the oracles of, and the deafness and the riches of your, yeah. of your knowledge, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So this portion of scripture right here, it, it really means something when you study your whole Bible. Amen? And when you begin to study the Old Testament along with the New Testament, you begin to put together the, the what is happening in the New Testament that corresponds with what was said and done in the Old Testament. It begins to bring to life uh, the, the, will, the, 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 the testament of God. Amen? The Word of God. The Word of God is alive and living. Amen? But we have to get it off of the page and into our hearts. And that only comes as we begin to get some revelation about exactly what something means. Why did they say that? I mean, a lot of things that we read, like for, for instance, last week Matt used a Jewish idiom. That even the dogs get to eat the crumbs or pastor death, which is just a Jewish idiom. It's just an idiom of, like, we have American idioms, right? Not American idiots. We have those too. Not American idioms, amen? Uh, and there are things that are in the Bible that if you don't research, you really don't know what they're saying. What they're saying is, is that, that, that the Jews looked at the Gentiles as dogs, right? They looked at them as dogs, and even Jesus was a Jew. So he said, what, what, what? He goes, why would I? He more or less was saying, like, why would I come and give the, the, the food that I have for God's children to dogs? Right? right? Because in these, in these idioms that he's speaking, these are customs that they're following through with. So at this particular time, when, when Luke was writing this, uh, I want to plant this revelation down in your heart about the, the power of expectation. Because in this scripture, it comes at a crucial time for God's people. There had been four centuries, 400 years of silence since Malachi. Yes. 400 years. Yes. 400 years they hadn't heard from God. Yes. I mean, if you go all the way back to the very beginning when God told uh, Noah to build an ark, and then he gave him the instructions, and then he didn't talk to him again for 120 yes. years, you can imagine yes. that that's a long time, 120 yes. years to stay on the path of God. Yes. And here we have a generation of people that had not heard from the Lord for over 400 years. And all of a sudden the Lord shows up on the scene. Yes. Are you hearing me? He shows up. So Malachi ended with God promising something to them. And so they they were a people when they begin to hear about John the Baptist preaching Jesus and about what was going on. They started looking at John the Baptist and because of the baptism and the miracle stuff, they said, are, are you the one? And he's like, no, if you keep reading, you'll find it. He said, I'm not the one, and I'm not even worthy to latch his shoelaces, you know? Right? But the people were expecting something because they had been hearing. They had been anticipating. In fact, in the, in the English interpretation of the Bible, it says that the people were 
on their tippy toes in expectation. Like an Assembly of God preacher. I'll wait. <laughs> always, always, right? Always on your tippy toes. Praise God. So this, this uh, Malachi ended, and if you, you, you read the book of Malachi, you'll see it ends with God promising, and he said, I promise you, I'm going to send the prophet Elijah on, on the great and dreadful day of the Lord. I'm going to and, and so there was, there was 400 years of silence. Anyone ever gone through any time in your life when you just felt like you couldn't hear God? Yes. Or felt like you just like, no matter what was being said, you just, you just weren't hearing God. Amen. I've been through seasons where I just couldn't hear God. Amen. I remember once that I was like in, in service and everybody was getting prayed for and everything and I didn't get prayed for and I'm like, man, I wanted to get prayed for. No. And I'm like, well, God said, well, you was catching people while they was getting prayed for. You were helping out. You were working. You were doing this. And, and uh, I'm like, yeah, but I know, you know, I want that prophet to pray, to touch me and pray for me and lay hands on me and speak over my life and all that, you know. And God's like, well, aren't I enough to speak over your life? I was in the back of the church over on Mont Diablo Street, standing in the and, and the preacher was in it and all this, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm complaining in my heart because I wanted to get prayed for and all that. And, and the Lord said, the Lord said, just like this, I'm going to teach you about faith. And I'm not, and, 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 and so for a year, for a year, a whole year, I couldn't hear the Lord, I couldn't feel the Lord, I couldn't. I couldn't hear nothing God was saying. The word was like eating bitter. I just couldn't get anything out of it. Anybody ever been there? Yes. yes. Just, I couldn't. I couldn't. And, and, and I, I, I would just I would cry. I'd go to the altars. I would beg. I would plead. I would, I would just everything. It was a whole year. And I kept working. Yeah. I kept going to church. I kept being an usher. I kept greeting people. I kept handing out flyers. I kept catching people at the altar. But the whole, and with a smile on my face. But the whole time I was going, I didn't even know God no more. God no more. The devil's lying. There ain't no God. See, there ain't no God. There ain't no God. If there was a God, you'd hear him. If there was a God, you'd feel him. If there was a God, there ain't no God. This is all hoopla. But I stayed faithful. I was taught very young in ministry by my pastors that no matter what, you stay faithful. You continue. You you weather the storms. You continue on because God will show up. God will show up. God will show up through all of that while I'm whining. And it, there was an expectation. And I remember just a year. It was a year afterwards. And I was standing in the same place because I was an usher, see. I was standing in the same place. Man, the power of God was falling. Things were happening. And God said, can you hear me now? I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I can hear you now. Because, see, faith pulls on God. Faith moves the heart of God. You understand that? Expectation. It moves the hand of God. Now, I know I've, I, I, I've gone, I tell you, I, I know that I have gone through those things. And, 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 when, you're, and when your faith is even at an all-time low, what do you do then? What do you do then? Get on your knees. Get on your knees? Get on your knees. You know what I, I learned to do during that time? I did what I knew to do. I did what I knew to do was right. I did what the principles laid down in the word of God said to do was right. Because I knew that out of the ashes, huh? I knew that there was new birth coming. I knew that something, I had an expectation. But even though my faith was like, eh. I had this expectation, and, and 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 I'll tell you that I hate to say this, but I followed the I followed everything that I'm against, like rules and regulations and religions and doctrines. I just said, I know to do that, I'm gonna do that. I know to pray, I'm gonna pray, because you gotta pray to stay. Huh? I know if I fast, I'll last. I know if I give, I'll live. Huh? I know if if I read, eventually I'll eat. So, so I've often wa wondered about God's silence, and I've come to realize that he's never really silent, but he's often searching the hearts of his people looking for faith. Yes. 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 
Because it's faith that pleases God. In the Bible it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, I make religious people mad when I say that God is a God of faith. Because they say, God don't need faith. I say, well, God don't give what he don't have. If, you have. if he gave you a measure of faith and you were created in the image of him, that means he has faith. And when God said, let there be light, God was saying it by faith. And there was light. Because they, 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 all of the elements of everything have to obey the faith of God. Because he's God. You understand? Yes, that makes the religious people mad. I used a term for many, many years, and, and, and some of you have heard me say it, and, and maybe today you can get it. But I've used this term for a long time, and if you've been here for any period of time, you know that I mean what I mean when I say it. But right now, in the condition of the world and the church and our lives and our families, right now, more than ever, we need to put a faith pull on God. You understand? A faith pull. A faith pull which was found all the way back in the very beginning when the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. That Noah, the world was falling apart. It was in disarray. It, was, it, was, it wasn't what God had intended it to be because of the fall and nature of man. So Noah, who was a righteous man, reached and put a faith pull on God and he pulled grace from God into a dispensation of judgment. Yep. You understand that? Yeah. We were not in the dispensation of grace, but it was something that was in God the whole time. Christ, it was in God. The Christ was in God the whole time. The Son of God, you understand? The triuneness of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. They, 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 so Noah reached into the future, so to speak, because Christ wouldn't be born for another few thousand years. Christ is grace. You understand? He, he is the way. He's the word. When you study grace, you're going to find out that Jesus was grace sent to us. Noah reached into a dispensation and pulled grace. Noah found grace. Why did he find grace? Because he was expecting to find something in God that he didn't have at that time. And when he found grace, God told him what to do. Build an ark. Because it's going to rain and the whole earth is going to flood. Judgment is coming. Start building the ark now. Hello? He put a faith pull on God. We are in perilous times. And the church cannot just sit and watch and do nothing. We cannot just live our lives and do nothing. We must begin to put some type of pull on God. Because I believe that there are things in God that has not even been released to us yet. Some of you have been looking for happiness your whole life and you can't find it. The reason is, is because happiness is a substitute for the joy of the Lord. Amen? Yes. Amen? You have to find the joy of the Lord so that you can be happy. We look for happiness in everything. I know, man. I used to shoot dope in my veins looking for something. I used to snort drugs up my nose and I used to drink till I blacked out drunk. My wife used to drag me in. I was 23 years old. She would drag me out of the ditch out front so that I didn't drown in the mud puddle. Saved my life. I mean, there's, I, 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 I don't know what I was looking for, but obviously I wasn't finding it. Are you hearing me? I found out later what I was looking for. What I was looking for was God. What I was looking for was that joy. What I was looking for was peace. I needed peace, and I thought that everything in the world was going to give me some type of peace, but it wasn't. Even Matt talking about money. You know, money's a, a wonderful thing to work with and to use and to have. And, and God wants us to be wealthy. God don't want us poor. Amen? God wants us blessed. But he doesn't want us to, to, to love money so much that it becomes a curse. So we're in perilous times. And the church, that's you and I, Cannot just sit and watch and do nothing. 
So, so I believe that we're in a time where God is looking for those that have expectation. In fact, when God made the judgment upon the earth during Noah's time, the Bible lets us know that God saw Noah. He saw him and he was righteous. He saw there was a righteous man. He saw there was a good man. He saw there was somebody that wasn't like everybody else. It wasn't living like everybody else. It wasn't doing what everybody else was doing. You understand? Yes. This is why we're called to be different yes. and separate. Amen. Not self-righteous, but just different. We're called to be creative and we're called to, to, to have, you know, to, 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 uh, to capitalize upon the gifts that God has put in our lives. Yes. But at the same time, we have to make sure that our hearts and minds are right before the Lord, that we're doing the right thing. Yes. Or we will go down a trail, a, a, a road that is, gets really wide. When, as it gets really wide, we get really tempted with the opportunities. Can you say amen? amen? I believe that we're in a time where God is looking for those that have expectation. Those whose faith is pulling on him like Noah. Those who expect God to show up and show off. Amen. Those that... Expect God to show up and do the impossible. Yes. I mean, when's the last time you believed God for the impossible? Yes. I mean, like, when was the last time you really believed God for the impossible? Well, last time I believed God for the impossible, God didn't do it, and it was impossible. <laughs> Listen, our faith cannot simply be about survival. It has to be, it has to reach into the very heart of God and move him to pour out his spirit into your circumstance into your situation. You understand? Yes. God is a God of compassion. Yes, he and he's a passionate God. Yes. I mean, he He loved us so much that he, he gave his only begotten son. Yes. Tell me that's not passion. Yes. In fact, they call what Christ did was the passion of the Christ. Yes. Yes. You understand that? Yes. So our worship needs to be filled with expectation. Our praise is needs to be filled with expectation. Are you hearing me? Yeah. When, when was the last time that you were on your tiptoes reaching by faith for expectation? And I can tell you it's probably been a while because you don't have any expectation. You've been living your life in survival mode rather than expectation mode. And if you want to see God do the miraculous, whether it be in your family, your, your job, your finances, your home, your marriage, your relationships, whatever. If you want to see God move in those things, then you're going to have to get on your tippy toes in expectation. Amen. You're going to have to begin to believe God and trust God and begin to put a faith pull on God like Noah did. It's not the only time it happened. It happened in Sodom and Gomorrah when the Lord was... Uh, passing judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah, but there was a man there that was connected to Abraham. His name was Lot. Lot was connected through Abraham so that, that there was a righteousness that overflowed from Abraham's faith even into his family. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Now you say, what? Yeah. The Bible says that Abraham's faith was counted to him as righteousness. Yeah. All right? So if you will begin to uh, allow that faith to manifest in you, it will be counted to you as righteousness. That means that you're not going to be perfect. You're going to mess up, but your faith is going to be counted to you as righteousness. Amen? That God is going to overlook because of the dispensation of grace. So our faith cannot simply be a survival thing. It's a, it, it has to reach into the very heart of God. And we need to worship God like that we're reaching into his heart. We need to praise God like we're telling him how good he is. Yes. Amen. You understand? When you praise God, you need to be telling God how good he is. Yes. Some of y'all praise yes. your dog more than you praise God. Seriously, we love our dogs. Our dogs are saying, come here to the bed. Get on the bed. Get on the bed. Come here. Get it. Get it. Get it. Right? That's how I do anyway. It's the truth, man. Seriously, no, don't you touch that dog. <laughs> that dog ate the other dog's dog food. He was hungry. <laughs> dog was... Happens all the time, right? The dog goes eat the other dog. 
Your dog, yeah, cat. Yeah, we have our dog. We have her dog and my dog, and you know, your dog and my dog stay. That's because your dog's stupid. He don't eat when he's supposed to. Right? Cause all kinds of arguments. When you pray, you don't pray amiss by just repetitive sayings, but you pray expecting God to not only hear you, but to move on your behalf. That's the, the, the prayer of faith in the book of James. We pray the prayer of faith, amen? The prayer of faith with expectation. Listen, church, listen, 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 listen. Right now, today, we need an outpouring of God's spirit. The Bible says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Right? There's another uh, scripture in Joel, I believe it is. Maybe it's maybe maybe I'm getting backwards, but one of them says, "I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh." And I believe, I believe, my theory on that is, is that God is talking about His people. He's talking about using us. I'm going to pour out of my spirit, which is in you. I'm going to use you to pour out on other people. I'm going to use you to move mountains by faith. I'm going to use you as a testament. I'm going to use you as a witness. I'm going to use you to reach the lost. I'm going to use you to pray. I'm going to use you. And if the church doesn't get real in their faith, right, all we're going to see is a bunch of shows. Right? Just a bunch of performances and a bunch of shows and a bunch of, a bunch of flashy lights and smoke. It was so powerful there. Did you see the lasers? <laughs> hey, and those things are all cool, man. I dig them. We got, we got lights. We're going to put up lights. We're going to do all that. It's all good. I mean, listen, God had that stuff before the devil. Listen, God's music was way before rock concerts. That's right. You understand? Yep. They was worshiping God in heaven with all them lights and stuff going on way before the devil brought them down here. You need to understand that. Yeah. That's what he did in heaven. You, need, you, know, you know, the Bible says that he, was, he, he had all the instruments and the horns and guitars and drums and everything within the nature of his, who he is and his clothing and his arraignment. Uh, and, and then he brought it down here to use it against God. Yes. I don't know why I said all that. So we need God's outpouring. Our culture and our, our generation... This world is sick and demented. Yes. If the church doesn't get real in their faith, if they don't get real about this, they don't just get real about it, right? And I'm not talking about hyper-spirituality. You know, the space cadets. It's a space. I'm talking about somebody that, that knows God. Somebody that spent time with the Lord. Somebody that's, 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 that's allowed the Spirit of the Lord to nurture them. Somebody that allows the Lord to, to have his way in them. Somebody that has faith, real faith in the Lord. The church doesn't get real in their faith. If people keep playing church, we keep getting further and further and further away from the, super, the supernatural power of God. And we're producing our own uh, environment, which we call supernatural. Right? We're, call, we're, we're using all of the gadgets and things to make something appear. Supernatural. But we need the real supernatural. Yes. We need God. And that's where it takes God's people. God's people don't go to church to see a show. God's people go to church because they're gathering together in one accord to worship. They're gathering together in one accord to eat. Come on. It's a table that's set before them so that they can eat the word of God. They're not just hearers, but doers of the word. They come to be, come on, they come to, to, to receive that word. And to be challenged. To be challenged to be obedient to what God is saying. But it takes faith. Because the world is pulling at you and tugging at you. The minute you walk outside, hunger is going to hit you. The minute you walk outside, opportunity is going to present itself to forget what was said, what was done. The minute you get in your car and turn the radio on, if it ain't something giving glory to God, you all will forget anyway. Huh? Get whiskey bent and hell bound. 
So we keep getting further and further, unable to take effective action. We become powerless and, and helpless and useless. But that's not how God equipped us. That's not who God called us to be. God called us to be people of faith, man. People that speak to mountains. People that subdue lions. You understand? People that overcome situations and circumstances. People that can minister deliverance to a lost and dying nation. People that can speak the word of God over any circumstance and watch the hand of God begin to move. Because we have faith in God. We trust God. We know that God is real. We know that God is alive and well. We know that God will do it. I've had enough wind blew up my rear, haven't you? I want what's real. I want Jesus. I just want what's real, man. That's what I want. And God told me, I'm searching for that. Just like in Noah's time, I'm searching for that. I'm searching for that real faith. And when Jesus came to earth, out of all the things that he said to people, everything out of all the things he said, he only gave a few compliments. Most of the time it wasn't very complimentary, but in the few compliments he did, it was all about faith. Woman, I haven't seen such faith in all of Israel. Woman, in fact, the woman with the issue that pressed through and touched the hem of his garment, the Bible says that when she touched him, it stopped him, and he turned around like, who touched me? Because the virtue left my body. The healing virtue left my body. All she did was touch his clothing, but she had such a faith that it put a pull on him. It put a pull on him. That's what God is looking for. Faith. Amen. It's faith. And the enemy is doing everything to, he can to beat the faith out of us. Yes. To replace it with everything. Yes. Colossians 2 and 14 says that God has blotted out the, the ordinances that was against us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So there's nothing standing in the way between you and God right now. You understand that? You may think of all kinds of reasons why. You don't understand what I did last night. No, no, no. There's no reason. Listen, it's blotted out. You understand? There is nothing standing in the way except you. You understand that? Yes. You love your children, right? Yes. I mean, like, is there anything they could do that would block that out? I mean, like, if your kids came in and said, you don't understand, I, I went out drinking last night and said, I still love you. I still love you. Right? I, I, you don't understand. I, 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 I did this and I did that. And I, did, I, I still love you. It's going to have to change your life, but I still love you. Definitely have to change your life. So there's nothing standing in the way. There's nothing standing between you and your miracle. Nothing. Nothing. There is nothing standing between you and family revival. Nothing. You understand? Yes. Nothing. God nailed it all. All the baggage. God nailed it all to the all the sin, all the all the fear, all the loss, all the He nailed it all to the cross. You understand that? Yes. He nailed it all to the cross. Now you need to get up on your tippy toes in faith, expecting and, and knowing that God is pouring out your miracle. He's pouring out. He's pouring out his, of his spirit. He's pouring on you and he's pouring out of you. All around by faith. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how many people that we want God to pour into us, but we don't want God to pour out of us. Yeah. Amen? Amen? God is ready. I know, I asked the Lord. Like, he's pouring out, of your, he's pouring out your miracle. I'm like, listen, God is ready. I'm like, God, why don't you do this and this? And he goes, I'm ready. I go, God, why don't you do this? And he goes, I've been ready. He goes, I always will be ready to move on your behalf. Where's your faith? What do you expect? When you came here today, what is it you expect? I mean, like, do you expect? I'm getting out of TV. 
Camera here. Do you expect God to move in your home? Do you expect family revival? Do you expect to be blessed? Do you expect prosperity? Are you just a lowly worm that's just like, well, you know, whatever God does, I'll just be happy with it. Man, whatever God does, he already, he's already done it. You just ain't getting it. It's there. It's available. He was, I want my family saved. Then get them saved, damn it. Yeah. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> of course you did. Come on. <laughs> Put in some overtime. Yeah. Right? Yeah, right? Can we edit that? <laughs> <laughs> I, want my fam- I want my family in church with me. Then don't take no for an answer. Yeah. Go get it. By faith, man. Right? You figure out the, you figure out how to get the things you really want. Yes, you do. You figure out how to get them. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Don't say you don't, because you do. You figure it out. I know. Because I'm going to go get her. All I have to do is start thinking like, this is what I need to do. And then I start working towards it. Right? Pastor Beth said we need chairs on stage. I'm like, well, they're 350 bucks a piece. We don't need those chairs. She's like, those are the ones we need right there. I'm like, well, I don't think so. That view works just fine. Yeah, I don't care. It wasn't falling apart while we were sitting there. Notice we have the chairs. nothing standing between you and God. That's right. God is ready. And God's been ready. Yeah. Now, now, what do you expect? What are you expecting? What are you expecting today? I can tell you that I expect deliverance, prosperity, healing, salvation, blessing. I expect God to raise me up into a, a more prophetic walk with him. I expect God to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. I expect to see that. Amen? Amen. Listen, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, 126, I'm almost done here. It says, it's time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. We're living in a time where they have made the word of God void. Come on, we live in a culture that has made the word of God void. And now the Bible says in Psalms 119, which is the exact middle of the Bible, for those of you, it's a, long, it's a, it's a great portion of scripture to read. In 126, they, it is time for for thee to work, Lord, for they have made void thy law. And that, in other words, the psalmist is saying, Lord, they have nullified everything you stand for. Yeah. It's time to show up and show them who you are. Yeah. It's time to show up and show them who you are. And God said, I'll, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And I'm like, yes. What do you need? He goes, the church. That's what I need. The church. I'm like, okay. Way too many people are disregarding God's word. This this world is showing its it, it, its sickness. Yes. Not so we can, and then we don't see it so that we can join it. No, right. Amen. Amen. If they're not calling you some kind of Jesus freak, you ain't doing something right. <laughs> If they're not hating on you, you need to post more stuff about Jesus. Amen? Seriously, if they if, if the world ain't hating on you, if you're not pissing them off, you ain't saying it right. Now, I ain't saying, listen, I ain't talking about going after people that are in, you know, well, you sin, you're going to hell. I ain't talking about that. Huh? You get way more out of people saying, I can't believe that you're so ignorant that you're not serving Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> that really makes people mad, right? Yes. Lord, pour out your spirit. That's what we want. Yes. Come against depression, oppression, disease. Come against unbelief. Come against fear, against yes. all that is hindering God's people. Yes. Because we were called to be people of faith. And that is the one thing that the Bible says it pleases God. That's what, I mean, it makes it tends to reason, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So with faith, in fact, in the Hebrew, the faith chapter, 
you can find that it was the, it was those it was the the men and women of faith that God commended. Yeah. They, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews in that faith chapter six, I believe it is. Uh, it says that these people had so much faith, like Moses and David and Abraham, and, and they had so much faith that the world was not worthy of them. Think about that. The world wasn't worthy of Jesus either. But the world became worthy because of Jesus. And now we are worthy. But we're only worthy through salvation and through our faith in God. Come on, I'm closing. closing. We need to ask the Lord to pour out upon us his spirit. You understand? Yes. We need to, individually, we need to ask the Lord to pour out his spirit upon us individually. You need to ask the Lord to pour out his spirit upon you. You need to ask the Lord. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, people. Here's the thing. It's not just a simple thing that we're talking about today because what I'm talking about is going to challenge your faith. You're talking about moving into an area of faith that puts a pull on God. Not for the things of us, but for the things of God. Yeah. It's going to pull, put a pull on God to, 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 to charge you with a responsibility. That we might not, I'm lazy, I don't want to do that. I don't want to tell people that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to invite people. I don't want to pray. I don't want to do this. I don't want to give. I don't want to. We got the I don't want us. That's not expectation. Do you realize that according to the Bible, Jesus is going to come back or you're going to die? And after that, it's too late. If we don't do it now, if we don't do something now, if we don't get something done now, Julie, I pray you just take Tennessee and just, I really, I, I think y'all are going to do great back there. Yeah, yeah. I think God's going to just do that. Was I, was I supposed to say anything? You're fine, God. <laughs> it, it's just going to be awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, you're an awesome person of, of God. You've been such an uh, a influence in my life. And, and I believe in you. And I just know that God is. And, and it's not a small thing. You probably already know. It's going to be a large thing. It's going to do something really large. I don't know exactly what it is. But it's, in, it's already in the, the potency of it. It's like, a, it's like a tree, right? Like an orange tree. We all identify the orange tree because it's got oranges hanging all over it. But the potency of it was inside it before it ever produced an orange. The potency's in there, Mom. Right? It's already in the tree. It was an orange tree before it had an orange. That's the way God made it. The same way He made you. You're full of that potency. You're going to see the fruit begin to manifest like never before. Amen. And you've done some marvelous, man. You've done some things. You and the Spirit of the Lord in you have done some Amen. thousands and Amen. thousands and thousands and thousands of people have not gone hungry because of what you've done. Amen. 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 And received the Lord. Yes. So many people have gotten saved and dedicated their life to the Lord, but that's only the beginning. Amen. Amen. That's right. Everything you've gone through has, has become a tool for you. And it's, it's awesome. I'm, I'm just. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, going, I'm going back there. I'm going back there. I'm coming back there. I'm coming back there. I'm telling you, I'm going to come back there too. She's going to call me and tell me where it's at. All right. Here's the thing. Today, many of us, for us to really, for us to really put that pool on God, we have to step out of our comfort zone. Right? And we become very indignant, very comfortable. And, huh? When I got saved, man, there was snot all over my face. Yeah. Right? Tears rolling down me. I was laying on the floor, crying out. I don't know what ever happened to that guy. He, 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 I, think he, I think he showed up this week. That guy that needed God more than anything. Come on now. Amen? That guy that needed God more than anything. That guy that realized that he didn't even have a life. 
Let the Lord breathe into me. Today, many of us are at that point where we want family revival. We, we don't want to be the tool. We, we, we want God to move, but we don't want to have the faith. But God told me this, just this morning, He said, I'm ready. If they're ready. I'm ready if you're ready. So the Lord says, I'm ready if you're ready. Now what are we going to do? I'm ready if you're ready. What are we going to do? I'm ready if you're ready. Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray today. That I'm, I'll, in fact, I'm just going to open up the altar. And I want, to, I want you to come to the altar if you need to come for God to increase faith. For what he's called you to Come on. And increase that faith in the name of Jesus. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Increase. Faith increase. Faith increase. Right here. Right here. Amen. Right here. Faith increase. Right here. Even in our coming church, we have to pray. Let's go to spirit. 